Hey guys, we're back with you. Um, as you can see, we've been working hard. We got the swamp in. Like I told you, here's two braces holding this plate. These two that are right next to the um, cooler are out far enough to brace the next plate. And then the weight from the top shifts back down onto the original stud onto that plate. So everything transfers down weight load wise. It's in. Um, we could have done one, like one, two more, but you really don't gotta go that far. You can. Um, and then we're gonna show you, we started drywalling so we can get the tattoo studio rolling. I gotta show you a different angle because of lighting. So we drywalled around the window there. We have the drywall here and then it goes all the way like this and then we cheated the ceiling with some wood and tarps and we built right here a false wall for the to section off the main part of the shop for now because like I said um, we were getting ready to do a tattoo area in here because I gotta get back to tattooing as well I haven't done any for a little while and uh, it's time to do some but we're also coming at you with a product review today. So we have from the Home Depot, it's called the Freeman 6 inch variable speed random orbital polisher. Okay, so model P60PK. Um, I was told this looks similar to the one that they sell at the Harbor Freight. I just buy stuff through the Home Depot and the Lowe's and things because of uh, credit and. I mean, they sell decent products. Um, so we're gonna do a product review, uh, initial one. This uh, thing's supposed to come with a bag and uh, a bunch of pads and things. So I figured we would open it together. So I guess you could kind of call it a unboxing too. Um, and uh, let's see what we got here. So it comes with a yellow pad. Okay, comes with a black pad and a red pad. The red pad feels more aggressive than the yellow and then the black. So it looks like red, yellow, black as far as aggressive to least aggressive. Um, we got, it comes with a handle here. Um, let's see, another handle. Okay. And, uh, and we got the polisher, looks like hook and loop. So yeah, it's a hook and loop. So we could probably even put some hook and loop uh, six inch paper on there, uh, sanding if we wanted to do some, uh, stay using the air for prep work for the, uh, flow coats. I think I'm going to start using this when I do flow coats too. So here's the manual. Okay. I'm not going to look at it because fucking we don't look at manuals around here for tools. We just know how to use tools because we've been doing it forever. And uh, all the reviews said it seemed really durable. Seemed like a good one. Um, there was many, many good reviews versus like some of the other ones I've seen. Uh, I always look at reviews before I buy something anyway, just to do my best. And uh, it seems like uh, yeah, it seems like it'll be good. So we're gonna try it out. Um, we're gonna see what she does. Um, you know, and it looks like a decent model, so I'm excited because the other buffer polisher, the two-handled one, burned out. So I don't recommend you buy one of those pieces of junk. That was one from the uh, O'Reilly's. It was a, uh, what do you call it, a, not a master craft, but a power torque or some crap like that. And, uh, I have some power torque socket bits, but um, per personally, I think um, 
the uh, it's not good. Oh, and look, and then they give you some other buffer or some uh, contacts. So when it burns out, you can go in there and fix it. So we'll leave those in the bag. Um, probably like right here in the front pocket. That'd be good. And then uh, that's it, guys. I mean, maybe we'll do some uh, polishing videos and things and start doing some actual videos of us doing the work. Um, I'm thinking about looking into a GoPro and I just, I would rather buy tools and things like this and have to like just kind of show you before and after videos than spend the money on a GoPro right now because even though they're not super expensive, I mean I got a lot of things to still finish. I got walls to frame. Um, I will show you one more time over here. In this corner we're gonna eventually have a bathroom in the shop because see they left plumbing I just have it all capped off and then back in there's a water line but I still gotta put a plug here and a plug right here for when the bathroom's done for the the uh, bathroom and then I gotta wire all that up and over and out and then I can finish drywalling from there over all the way to the tarp over there and then from there we're gonna build this wall and then do the ceiling drywall too it's all in phases guys that's how we get it done around here it's we work patiently we build cheaper makeshift walls in the meantime to make it work because that's a money move because i'm going to use this area to to do my tattooing in now that we tiled the kitchen and I don't want to slide my big 400 pound dentist chair around on my tiled kitchen floor no more because it was just linoleum before so now we're working on other ways of making money and I need the cooler because when you tattoo you have to have a certain temperature for uh, bacteria purpose you cannot tattoo and have people sweating and hot it's just like a hospital environment you're supposed to keep it as cool as you can and so with that note just to give you guys a pointer if you're tattoo artist and you're not following us for the automotive um your best bet in like my scenario using a swamp cooler and i'm doing makeshift stuff is to start early morning sucking in as much cold air as you can and ice boxing that zone so you get more hours of work time and then stopping when the temperature gets to a certain degree so maybe put a like i'm thinking i'm going to do i'm going to put a temperature type thing up on the wall so it reads and then i'll know like what i'm tattooing in because as you know anybody that goes to a hospital it's super cold at a hospital and that's why they keep it cold because they don't want infection from bacteria that can grow or so they keep stuff really cold <coughs> um, you know and that's a good thing for everybody so anyways we'll check out the Freeman we'll give you our opinion oh and another thing on it I didn't see it but right now there's a variable speed in the back it looks like so if anybody's questioning it we won't go through that or deal with like the um, torque wrench where I had the messed up video I'm sorry about that guys anyways um, enjoy uh, your days and uh, we will get back to you guys when we can and uh, you know peace prosperity and all that are out there trying to help the world and give back to humanity um, you know thumbs up to all the other youtubers that I follow and possibly follow me that are about the positivity and down with the haters and up with the participators guys because the only way this world's going to get better and succeed and progressing into the future with all the other issues we have is we have to stop hating on each other and start participating and getting stuff done we have bigger issues than people know um like i don't follow the news much but i I'm very, I follow history, science, um, 
I'm not political by no means, but um, there I follow some of it, but I'm not super political. I don't really follow too much because it's I got better things to worry about, like global warming, for instance. Everybody thinks it's a hoax, but if you look at what the weather's saying this year, this is supposed to be the hottest year from now, and it's supposed to progressively get hotter every year and have longer runs of heat for the next 15 to 20 years or something like that, they're saying. And if you're not following weather and natural disaster stuff like I do, because that's what I'm really big on because the planet's always changing, they're saying we're supposed to have global heat records. Not They're not talking about national, um, you know, uh, continental. They're talking about global, worldwide heat records this year, and it's supposed to continually go, go up, which now... Let's put it this way, guys. We started seeing some weird activities like places freezing over with snow that normally don't freeze over. And we started seeing other places getting extra hot that they're already hot, but they're exceeding their heat limits. And there's some weird things going on with our weather change, guys. Um, I'm not a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist like as far as like a lot of things go i don't really think people are covering up a lot or anything i just don't think people recognize the patterns that don't follow it and they think that the people that do are crazy and that's fine um but with all that said guys if you whether you think i'm crazy or not you should look into it at the very least and at least give your own opinion to yourself of what you think about it because don't ever take anybody's word for nothing. Always do your research and take your own word for your own. On what you want to pick and choose out of advice or what people are saying. And you decipher what you want to be true or not true out what they say. Because that's for you to figure out. You know, like, I don't let anybody tell me that any which way is the right way or wrong way or I'm wrong about a thought or because I may be wrong and I may not be you know I'd rather be prepared than not and I'm not a major prepper either I keep extra food and water around for maybe a few months not a long time um, my theory with that is is you got a lot of people who prep that don't have bunkers and things and they're it's kind of pointless uh, in my opinion, because if you over prep and you're in a regular situation like a regular house and things, that's only going to be so good for so long before people are going to come along try and kill you for what you have or whatever. So it's better to be able to move and move along, get further away from people, you know. So don't over prep, uh, don't buy in all that extra spending right now and stuff. Um, because it, it's pointless, like I said, unless you have a bunker you can hunker into for six months, a year, or two years, you're defeating the purpose by just stockpiling cabinets and wasting space and money. And you need enough to move, and that means three, four months in case something happens along your travels. Of you know, maybe you gotta move you know 30 hours away but it might take you four months to get there because of all the dangers and you know you don't want to be all crazy about it. you'll find somebody that will let you click up with them and then you'll get into a group or something eventually you know i mean don't buy into all the crazy stuff though um there is a such thing as over prepping guys let's get real um for majority of people, like I said, that don't have bunkers and they're sitting there and they don't have no floor space in their house no more because they're prepping day in and day out. Um, anyways, uh, so, you know, that's just some helpful advice is like we try and piece things together around here where, you know, we do certain things and, you know, other things we minimize and... You know, I'm not trying to be a life coach or nothing, but someone did once tell me that I should be because I've been through a lot of crap and uh, I've come out on top. 
and I fought every step of the way. I just don't really want to get into coaching people through hard times because it's kind of sad and it brings back memories of hard times I've had so uh, I prefer not to so anywho uh, love all the su subscribers out there even though we're not trying to be popular we're just trying to be part of a good community that's real about things and we will get back to you on this guy and you know enjoy your evening and uh, I will get back to you. All right, bye.